well, which um, they are shampoo. very rare. Huh? Like shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they're worth it. Um, <laughs> they're worth it. <laughs> That's awesome. Tasha D. It sure is. Is that the author of the Exinguated series? It is. Is this uh, Yes. Yes. Your, your teeth, they look there like small chiclets. It's very frightening. <laughs> I'm sure people are creeped out by this by now. <laughs> I frighten myself often. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Natasha, the author of the Exinuated series, a series of books that I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong. Exinuated. Exanguinated. Exanguinated. Yep, like penguin is how I was described. I don't speak very well either. It was described like penguin, so uh -huh. exanguinated. I think I'm saying it right at least. Expanguinated. Gotcha. There you go. Perfect. Nailed it. Nailed it. Natasha, thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show um, with me, your host, Matthew Whiteside, as always. I'm so happy to have you. Um, me. It's been a lot of fun getting to kind of know you on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. I realize that your sense of humor is ridiculous as mine because you laugh at some of the things I do, <laughs> which... <laughs> Which makes me happy, so thank you for that. Trust me, I've already shown everyone your model pictures, and I had we were dying at the office, and my my coworker was like, "That's something you would do," and I was like, "I'm jealous. I didn't think of it first. I know I'm really inspired to be a model. I've talked to people about acting classes and stuff, and it's amazing. Well, you should. I mean, from your videos and your Facebook and everything, really. Oh, yeah. Stop it. This isn't about me, Natasha. Just stop it. This is about you. I want to talk about you and but your you're books. A too. We I know, but you this too. is. I'm not a good one. I'm not as good as you are. Let's talk about. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good by any means. I'm no, I'm no Natasha D. Okay? Wait. I don't, I don't have my blanket anymore. Crap. I guess I could do this. There you go. <laughs> This is the this is the best start to an interview I've ever had. <laughs> it's Not at all. Complete See, you're nonsense. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so Natasha, you wrote a, you wrote books. You wrote two of them so far. I have. Let's see Wither these beauties. Them. Withering Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Is that book one? That's book two. Book one. Book the modest two. thesis. Okay, book one is Samata, Samata is thesis. Are these, these are different languages. No, 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 no. Are these books in English? This is English. This has to do with nerves. It, it's a big, long process when I started them because they're so vast. It's like they're nerve endings. It's like because they're all connected. And so that's why I named it. Samata is thesis. I totally understand. So... <laughs> Please tell me, <laughs> tell me what the hell this book is about. <laughs> this book, Samara's Thesis, which is book one in the series, it is about a girl named Spencer who was beaten and raped her freshman year of high school. And this has been about a year or so later. So it's her sophomore year now. Um, she's pretty much mute to everyone except for her two little sisters and occasionally, you know, her mom and dad. She, wow. she's at school, she's bullied relentlessly. I mean, people push her down, people call her names. It's just, it's, it's that, you know, it's something that happens in society every day. Well, then pretty early on, a set of twins, Aiden and Dementia, come into the picture and they kind of just take her on. They start trying to prove their worth to her by 
pushing out bullies, trying to talk to her, trying to be around. And she starts kind of trusting them, opening up, starts talking to them, which is something she's not done in over a year. And yeah. then um, she finds out that they're vampires. And so she's kind of got to... Oh, my God. And, <laughs> and so she's got to kind of, like, decide, is it worth, you know, keeping with them, knowing that there are these dark creatures because they've helped her through, or if they should if she should just keep them in her life, knowing what they are because of everything they've done for her or ignore them. And so she's got to kind of make that decision. And when she decides to keep them in her life, um, she ends up falling in love with Aiden. And so that's kind of like, I don't want to say love because, you know, it's still early on, but, you, you know, that's kind of her story. And it, it lived it, you know, I leave it with a cliffhanger because I'm, I'm that person. So, did you just give you didn't just give away the whole ending, did you? Oh no, 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 no! Trust me, trust yeah. me. I don't give the ending away. My is yeah. is this like a social? Is this like a, a commentary on um, how just because people are are perceived as like this this group of people are supposed to be bad that they don't necessarily that it doesn't mean they are bad. It's more of how their their actions show what they they're worth. It it really is. That's what this whole series, because I have a lot of bad vampires. My main protagonist is Chaos, which I don't think readers realize this quite yet because it's early on. But at the very beginning of them, like this, I put, readers, welcome to book one of Vampirian Chaos. This is a place where chaos reigns and the world is his playground. Enjoy your stay, but don't get too attached. Natasha D. Well, in book two, what people are not catching is, Dear Curious Kitty, it seems I've been forced onto the center stage by a self-righteous little girl playing the role of heroic writer. As for you all, you've been dragged down into the middle aisle into the audience in hopes of seeing my brilliantly vile performance. Watch your step. We wouldn't want you pricking your pristine toes now, would we? Chaos. Oh. So he's a very dark character, and you meet him, I'm not telling anyone when, but there's a lot of dark characters in here, but there's a lot of, for instance, I have this really dark, ominous character I'm writing now, for okay. book three, and he starts out cruel, and just, you don't want to like him, and he turns into this beautiful creature that you love, because... You love him because you get to know him as a snarky, sarcastic character. And it's it's kind of my interpretation of, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Kind of like the kind of like Charles Manson. I mean, yeah, I kind of sort of. <laughs> no, not at all. Why would you go along with that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> because it's funny. You know, it might get some people are like, oh, Charles Manson. You know, there are still followers yeah, out there. You never know. Kind of cuddly, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> definitely not. not that kind of thing. Definitely not. I mean, chaos is kind of sort of like Manson, I guess. He gets a lot yeah. of people to do it. But yeah, no, not like that. <laughs> That's not, how do you, how do you, um, come up with your characters like where did this whole idea come from i know you love you said you love vampires but where did this whole story idea come from the first one because they're different characters in this whole series because there's about 40 books planned for part one and there's different characters and things that have you know like some thesis some modern thesis has about five books of spencer and then like withering sapphire is eclipse and it has five of her and they're all interwebbed and connected together. And so, so Spencer, I've met a lot of people that have been mute because they've been bullied. And so that was kind of like, I wanted to hit on those topics that people don't like talking about. The ones that make people anxious and nervous, especially like rape. And um, when we get to book two, I can tell you about that one because that one really hits home for me because it has to do with my home life. And okay. so I, I kind of draw them from the outcast and from things that I've experienced and friends. And it's just kind of, I guess, a mix of all that. It's it. I, it was, I was talking to um, somebody about this earlier today about 
even the word rape, like, it's it's so polarizing that it almost lends to like the fear of the word even even being said. It it lends to people not even wanting to speak up when it's happened to them because we're so afraid of the connotation behind it. And it's almost like we're doing a disservice by not talking about it and making the word less powerful. You know, if, if we make the word less powerful, I feel like more people will be able to speak up and let people know that it's happened to them. And then more people can get help. What kind of light do you shine on on the whole? The I mean, obviously, she's been bullied and picked on and, and she's mute now. But like, what kind of... Uh, because I was, I was coming at it, I guess, in a way of, like, you know, trying not to, to make it something so overpowering that we just can't speak about it anymore, but trying to be a little bit lighter with it so people can maybe speak up. Yeah, I kind of do the opposite. I, um, I like the darker side because I didn't have the greatest of childhoods, which we can get into later when we talk about book two. But I wanted to dwell into it because so many people are scared to talk about rape, abuse, cutting, all of these things. And that's our problem. That's why people aren't getting over it. And that's why we have people that aren't reporting it and people that are over reporting it, things that don't happen, because we don't know how to talk about it. We don't know how to speak up, you know, and it's I want to create a world where you know they may not have always have the happy ending but they have that hey i've been here i know what this book is talking about because there's far too many books that are like oh well she was slapped and then they just kind of you know ended at that like i put in details i put in development of these characters learning how to deal with what's happened to them giving you know coping mechanisms that aren't just because I'm a romance writer, I love romance, but you can't rely on someone else to fix it for you. And so I kind of dwelled into that whole, at one point, Aiden even tells her, because she doesn't feel confident, he tells her, you know, I can tell you that you're beautiful until I'm blue in the face, but it's not going to work if you don't believe it. You have to tell yourself that. And so I think that's society's problem also is, we want the fairy tale ending. We want someone to tell us we're pretty. We want someone to tell us they love us and not leave. And that that doesn't always happen. And it doesn't make you feel better on the inside. That's not what it's about. Right. Yeah, the truth is, I mean, the, the whole self-worth has to come from self. Like, we have to believe it before anybody else can necessarily. And there is that that whole idea that I have to find my worth in other people and and it's got to be okay with everybody else. And I'm so glad that you're you're come you're coming and you're facing these topics that are so polarizing for people to talk about. Um, it's brave to do because nobody wants to really do it. And but when they, I feel like when people do do it, like you said, it's like overreporting or um, or making it more than it is or whatever. Um, but it's it's hard to do it in the right way because we just don't know. It's a, it's such an uncomfortable thing to talk about. Just like. You know, sex used to be super uncomfortable to talk about. Money's uncomfortable to talk about. Politics are uncomfortable to talk about. All these things. But it's like we never grow anywhere if we don't just open up and say, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. You're going to have to put your feelings aside for a little bit and deal with it. I mean, that's what growth is, right? It's like you just got to deal with life even if it's painful because it's life regardless. And other, I mean, other, sweeping it under the rug, it helps nobody. Yeah. For the longest time, I would just push everything aside. And, you know, I was a cutter, too. I have marks on me. And I would numb my feelings. I would never really deal with them. And several years ago, I had a lot of stuff happen to me. And I kind of drew into myself for several months. I didn't reach out to other people. I didn't use other people to help me. And I broke down. I broke down in a way I've never broke down before. I finally let myself you know, rather than being the strong front that I've always tried to be. And I yeah. finally learned to deal with these things and learn how to cope and realize that, you know, it can be done and we need to talk about these things. We need to teach our kids these things that, you know, sometimes it's okay to not be okay. Sometimes yeah. you have to deal with those emotions. Yeah. And so I, I think that's why I've, I've re- been writing these for years, but I think that's when I finally was like, 
okay, I really need to finish these on top of my two best friends getting on my butt making me do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it. That's awesome that they're making you do it, though, because it is it's so important. And, and writing can be so therapeutic in processing all this information. Um, yeah, and, and it's so true. Dealing like the whole idea that we can't say that I'm angry or I'm sad or I'm hurt or whatever, like we have to hide it from people. Is it's sad, right? Like, who are we trying to impress? <laughs> like, when did I get this idea that I'm trying to be perfect? Like, who? And it, it's so bad for me because. I mean, I was raised off and on by my dad. And so I've got that man mentality of, you know, I'm like the mother figure, like I have to be strong and right. And I have to be like the dad of just quit complaining and like, shut up, Natasha, you're fine. And like, I have that in my head, but it's like, sometimes I have to be like, okay, take a chill pill, deal Mm -hmm. with what's going on. Let yourself immerse. If you have to sit down and cry for a few days, be a little baby, by all means. Yeah. Not being a baby. You're letting You're yourself processing emotion exactly and i'm a then, man i cry sometimes when i have to like thank I, you see you know okay. you have to you have to sometimes break down get to the lowest you can be to build yourself up and yeah. you can't build yourself up if you don't dig into yourself and know who you really are Absolutely. and you know that's something at 26 i'm learning to do and it's difficult and sometimes so, i just want to reach out for people but that's not what you're supposed to do. You need to learn sometimes to deal with it yourself. That's so amazing that you're doing it at 26. I mean, it's something I'm starting to figure out at, you know, 33. But you're also a man, and, you know, y'all are slower in development when it comes to surgery. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> it's because I haven't cried as much as you. That's why. Yeah. No, no, no. I guarantee that's probably what it is. You've got to earn it by the tears that you spread. I, I do. I'm trying. I'm ca- I'm, I'm catching up on all my crying. <laughs> Healthy. Are you going to cry after this because I said you weren't as mature? Yeah, I am. I actually. I'm, hold, I'm holding it in right now. I'm like a volcano about to, <laughs> about to burst, man. Thanks for making me so terrible about myself. Oh, don't feel terrible. I'm just kidding. Whatever. It's harder harder for men because y'all aren't allowed to cry. Y'all aren't allowed to express these feelings. And it's so wrong because y'all have these emotions too. And that's, I mean, you know, that's what we have to teach our men too. It's, It's okay to cry. It's okay to not be okay. You know, it's not a womanly thing. No, it's a human thing. Exactly. Exactly. Once we all realize that we're actually all human beings, you know, and I talked about, I, I wrote about this too, like uh, realizing that we're not alone on this planet and we're not alone where we are. Like we're all the exact same, we're all human beings looking for the exact same things. And we just have to accept, once we accept that, it's like the world just opens up to you, you know, you know, it really does. Learning to trust also has been my biggest issue because of my past. Yeah. And I'm very lucky that I have my three best friends that I do now and that I have a close relationship with my family and people I didn't before. And it's it's nice. But we've got to learn that we're going to trust and people are going to break it. But that doesn't mean that we stop trusting altogether. Right. Life is about getting hurt. And it's not about how you fall. It's about how you get up. And it's, I mean, it's difficult, but it is what it is. It's like my Rocky poster says. No, look at that. I didn't even realize you had it. And see, I've never seen Rocky, so I wouldn't know. I just know the last scene, you know, where he's, This is, it says, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a mean and nasty place, and it can knock you to your knees and keep you there if you let it. But ain't nobody's going to hit as hard as life. There's something else. I can't remember. (laughs) You had that mostly memorized. I am impressed. It's not about how hard you get hit. It's about oh, wait, it's about how much chicken you have in your pocket. Oh, that's not that's it. Chicken in your pocket too? I thought I was the only one. No, rotisserie. You got to keep it on the fresh. Oh yeah, and you, you got to make sure you got all the right seasonings too. You can't put you know too much on there because you know. But, yeah, you got that yeah. extra chick- chicken seasoning in the back pocket. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. That's no. why that. That's why that booty picture looked all lumpy because you had the chicken, you had the chicken seasoning. <laughs> I can't even explain it. Oh, 
mind you, I don't know how I've not been fired yet. I wonder sometimes because the things I do and it's like my my actual owner of the building has walked in and at our old office, Leanne had this big box. Yeah. And so I got into the box because it was kind of a comfort thing being in the small. I'm claustrophobic, but boxes, I'm not really sure if I just hid in boxes when I was a kid to get away from the abuse or what it was. Yeah. But they comfort me. And so I'm sitting there in the box, fully in the box with my head taken out. And he comes in and I was just like, and he just looks at me and he's like, and then walks off. And I was like, am I fired? <laughs> Don't bring it to their attention. <laughs> Keep it quiet. And no, I think that's, that's I think that speaks stuff. though to the people. All people are pretty much they're all we're all weird, and it's just oh, like yeah. they're. I'm sure he was like, man, I was coming to hide in that box. Like he was probably pissed off that you were in his box. <laughs> You're probably right because he has caught me doing some of the stupid stuff, and he laughed. But seriously, yeah. he's probably jealous because you know. Natasha, you, you're extremely wise. Uh, wow, wise. never been told that before. No, <laughs> you, it's you're wise. It's really? true. Yeah. The, Is that your way of calling me old? No. Worried? No way, you golden girl. You you stay golden girl. You're not I'm old. I'm Sophia for a reason. <laughs> That's right. You're not old. So let's talk about the second book. Okay. This one. Directly. What's, how do you pronounce this one? <laughs> this is easy. See? Oh, okay. Withering Sapphire Evade. Okay, let me ask you this. What what um are these like uh young adult? Are they adult? Are they what is their classification? They're the first two could be classified as young adult. You can read them. There is a little bit of graphic nature in the first one because it, it does detail some abuse, and same with this one. It yeah. kind of depends on a parent, you know. But right. the further I get into the series, they become dark. And it's it, it's not as much of a young adult series. But I kind of tiptoe my way into the water of my world. <laughs> I'm proud of that one right there. Anyway, I kind of do the, you know, little tiptoe, kind of immerse you a little bit into the world. Because, you know, okay. it just, you know, dig into the vampires in the first one a whole lot. You just know about them. It doesn't right. really detail like breeds in any classifications, the courts, reformers. It doesn't get into a lot of that. And then it gets a little bit more into it. This one and then the book three that I'm working on, it just kind of like throws you head first into the water. So. Wow. <laughs> that sounds very cool. So there are, there are breeds of vampires? Yes, there are breeds. Um, <laughs> we have ancient which are the typical ones. They're strong. They drink blood. They're fast. They don't sparkle. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and they're, they're more of the, the strongest of the breeds. I want to say they're the originals. Okay. I actually map out because I'm so, so much of a perfectionist and OC that I have actually developed the breeds, how they started. And they started from the Mayans. And so wow. the it, it's a sickness gone crazy. Yeah, it's too much to get into at this moment. Okay. But, so it kind of stems from their ancients were the original ones, and they started these reformeries. At one point, they're like prison cells. I mean, like okay. prisons underground, like catacombs. And they were raping sh women and having kids. And at one point, there was one kid that wasn't as strong. He had to eat food. He wasn't as pretty. He wasn't as dazzling. And they cast him aside. And when they did that, that's when they were cursed with the infertile. That's when they were cursed for Im or immortality. And that's when breeds started popping out. So wow. the next breed is insecticide, which they well, have. Who was, who was the kid? <laughs> I Vampire say. Jesus or something. What's going on here? I do have a print. Um, I can't tell you about that either because I'm trying not to give too much away because there's okay. a lot of. Is that is that kid is that kid part of the, the storyline? Yes, he is integral to the part. He um he, yeah. I'm I'm being told not to say too much, so I'm okay. gonna. 
So anyway, he's an insecticide. And so he has to have human food. He's not as strong, not as fast. And um, I called them insecticides because they considered him a pest is what they did. And so that's why they got that. Um, my next breed is Vaxins, which they're the only ones that really have a physical feature to detail them by. They have red hair and it's always dyed red hair looking is what it is. Mm, okay. And they're the cannibals. They actually have venom that disintegrates bone and hair follicles so that when they eat the flesh and the blood, there's n- nothing left. No, no body. So they don't get caught. And wow. then <laughs> we have L'Oreal's, which um, they are shampoo. very rare. Huh? Like shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they're worth it. Um, <laughs> they're worth- <laughs> That's awesome. So, I love the laughing at the back. That's so good. Those are my... Um, <laughs> My entourage are dying at the moment. Um, I, love that. I love that. Okay. Um, so they are, they are actually the cruelest of the group. They have absolutely no human emotion, and they are yeah. very highly restricted, and they're very rare. And so they're so very I don't, cold-blooded. Exactly. They're the coldest blood. <laughs> they cold-blooded as hell. All right, cool. <laughs> and then um i have a spirit demon which okay. they actually jump bodies i guess you could say they take their eye color with them it's kind of a trait but they can transform into anyone they want essentially take their body for a ride and then they're immortal in that so you know if they get caught killing someone they can just go into someone else's body and they're free so they actually they leave do they leave their body behind and move into yes. another body? Wow. Yes. That's why they're called spirit demons and there's a lot of humor in here as well and sarcasm in my books, as dark as the material is. And there's a lot of times that one of my main characters that I'm working on, Nicolo, he gets he's a spirit demon and he gets made fun of quite often as, Oh, are you gonna jump into my body now or something? And it's 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 quite great. I like it. Well, that's anyway. good. You gotta, you gotta throw some humor in there. Yeah. So those are my breeds. I one day I was just thinking, you know, snakes have different venom. It affects people differently. Why can't vampire venom? And then that's, that's how. That's really cool. I've I've never heard that before. The different breeds of vampires, but it makes sense, right? It does, and I'm sure someone else has, you know, thought of it out there, and I just haven't read it yet, which I'm sure because you know. I write more than I read, but I've read every book there is. Uh, it's well, nice. This is a completely original. Idea. How do yeah. you like it? <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was great. I didn't like the werewolves. <laughs> and see, I don't like werewolves. Oh, I do have them. Anyway, I don't do werewolves. I just, for some reason it's not my thing. But there is a legend that one of the seven children from Apo, which is the father of the race, I guess you could say split off and became a different breed. And so I kind of touch on that because I know there are people that like werewolves. And while I don't, I wanted to kind of, I've got 40 books. I can mention them, you know, once or twice. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Wait, let's talk about this for a second though, because you have two books right now, but you have, this, this is a series of books that all told is going to be how many? Part one, Vampirian Chaos is 40. 40. 40 books in part one. It sounds massive, but as I've said, I'm putting them out in an order of... Wait, are they already done? I have 14 done. What are you doing? Get to work. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> I, I This is two years worth, okay? Or, well, three going on three. I wrote six a year for two years. So. Oh, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. They're not very good. I'm going back over my book three, and it's been over a month, and it usually takes me a month to just edit and do everything raw, even though it's grammar. It has so many issues. I know they do the rough draft, but I can't afford $3,000 to hire an editor every year to put these things out. And I'm going to die before I finish these. And so. Seriously. 
but it's I'm reading through this one and I'm just like it's one of the first ones I finished in two and a half weeks and I'm just like why did I write that what does it even mean it's so awful but it's great uh okay okay the book okay. the book is awful no it no 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 no. book three is probably one of my favorites because okay. you need the faction I gave that away. <laughs> too much. <laughs> it's too much information. <laughs> I create a faction is what they call, and they go off, go after chaos, essentially. Because chaos, he pops in through the novels and kills people, because that's what he does. Um, uh, and it's it's super fun. Um, fun. I'm going to shut it's up, fun. because I'm I, I'm getting my um, too much information card flashed at me. At the yeah, I mean, you you get a book series. It's gonna be forty books. You gotta give something, you know. Oh, I'm, <laughs> so I'm supposed to just do the leg thing, like flash them something. Like here's a toe. <laughs> Let him see it. Are you showing your toes off? Well, I'm not gonna show my whole leg. I gotta That's... give them something. I'll give them a toe. Well, we couldn't see the toe. Just just to let you know, it didn't come up in the camera. You gotta. There. There okay, it is. I'm eight feet, so I'm gonna stop that because these poor people, <laughs> like my dad, if he watches this, he's gonna throw up. <laughs> oh, he's gonna watch. He's a subscriber, that's for sure. Why were you sticking your foot up? Why are you Long story short, don't ask. Don't ask. How much? So how how you must write all day long, or how? What's the deal with that? You have a real job, though. I do. I do. And I, I love know, that I said real job, like. Writing is not a real job, but well, you know I, mean. I I have a job that pays me, you know, because you know, writing from these books aren't gonna make me a living. So <laughs> yet, no, you're pretty rich right now, Natasha. You're pretty rich on this. Those books will make you a living. You gotta speak this into your life. <laughs> <laughs> speak it into your life. Okay. One day, I always joked when I was a kid, um, my grandma would cry about money problems a lot. And I was like five or six at the time. And um, <laughs> she was crying one day. And I was like, Grandma, don't worry. One day, I'm going to be rich and famous. I'm going to buy a big old mansion. You're going to live with me. And I'm going to give you a $1,000 a day to spend on whatever you want. <laughs> and so now it's a running joke. If I like someone, I, I invite them to live with me in my future mansion. <laughs> so that's awesome. Pretty great. And we have a West Wing for the people that I've invited, but out of pity that we really don't want to deal with. Oh, wow. So you got a pity wing. That's... Yep. <laughs> can I come? <laughs> By all means, you can have the whole West Wing to yourself. That means you don't, want me. That no, means you don't want me there. You would be in the main part making us laugh. Trust me for sure. <laughs> we sure. would not. Get, oh man, it would be horrible. We'd all stay up all night. I can't even imagine. It would be bad. That sounds like fun. <laughs> okay. So how much? So how how often do you you have a real job that you hide in boxes at? All right, is that when you do your writing? <laughs> I, when it's quiet, I can sometimes get a little bit of writing done. You know, but job comes first, obviously. So people come in, you know, but. I mean, there for the longest time, I wouldn't even see my best friends. I would just go home straight from work, eat a quick bite, and eat and write for several hours. And I typed like a maniac. And then Saturday, Sunday, I would just sit at home all day and write. I wrote book Asher story. It started off as a dream, as yeah. this guy that was livid. He's my spirit, one of my spirit demons. He's livid because. He goes down in a plane crash and he likes his body and he's pissed because he's got to change bodies because he's a well-known lawyer. And yeah. so it kind of it was a dream and I've never had one of those dreams that I just kept thinking about it over and over. So I sat down and was like, okay, I'll write it. There's no reason that I can't just write something on it. One day I wrote 20 pages. The next day I wrote 30. So then I was like, okay, so Asher's going to be part of my story now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was an unintentional find. There's been a couple of those because I had like 12 or so three years ago working on them. My friends and I have built it to this 40 because of the massive twist and 
beautiful nature and stuff like that. Just like Onyx's story. Yeah. I gave that away. That's book three. It was it was one book and it has now developed into five. So is this is work. it's kinda like a, it's kinda like a um paranormal fantasy soap opera. You know, you are you are very right because there's a lot of stuff that happens in it that it's just like oh, gasp and vanish, you know. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, how did it happen? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah, the kind and, of books I like to read. <laughs> Is there like hypothetical organ playing? <laughs> like that kind of throughout the book? And I break the fourth wall a time or two, not just with chaos, because chaos, that's all he does is break the fourth wall. I have a, a couple of my characters that one of them's like, why don't you tell us your story? And he's like, why do I have to tell about mine? Why can't it be yours? And they're like, oh, well, we have like 12 other novels for that. Don't worry about it. And it's just like, and it's, and it's just these Wonderful. little here and there. And I have several characters that so many references to my friends and I, and then I have so that I don't get sued. Um, one of my characters, this one is obsessed with supernatural. <laughs> it's it's one of the guy vampires, and he's just like these brothers. It's it's just so fantastic, and he'll randomly yell like "grab the salt," and it's just he ends up <laughs> at one point fangirling because he meets them, and he's like, "I could be like an extra on their show. I could pretend to be a vampire and all this stuff," and they're like, "Dude, you are a vampire," and he's like. Well, they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that and sounds it's, awesome. It's great. I, there's a lot of humor, like I said, even though there's dark points, there's a lot of those snarky, sarcastic points in it. That... You know, in terms of the music part, you could put, you know how those greeting cards you open up and they have music that plays when you open the card? You could put that in your book for parts. <laughs> yes! That'd be cool. I don't think any. I don't think there's been a lot of. I don't think any authors tried that. I don't think they have either. You know, when I get rich and famous, I could probably afford to put that out of my pocket. So I'm gonna think about that. Yeah, I guess logistically it'd be kind of tough. You got to put like a iPod Mini or something in each one. <laughs> no, know, just I shuffle. Can... Just use the shuffle. You could do yeah, it. Yeah, just the shuffle, and it'll have like different ones. Like this, and it'll be like page 24. So you have to listen to that when you're reading page 24. No, why don't they do this with ebooks right now anyway? You could do it with ebooks. Like as soon as you turn to the page, the music starts playing from the ebook. I don't know why they haven't done that. This is brilliant. If I was not a technology genius, I would do this. But technology repels me, as we've noticed. I don't do well with technology. <laughs> it's hard. Technology it is very difficult. <laughs> <Don't spit out. laughs> what? I said that's what she said. I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I just love. I just love that your friend is like losing her stuff in the background. The other one, I'm surprised, is quiet right now. She's flashing me these sweet nothings cards. Um, oh. My character Onyx, he goes up to one of my other characters, and he's like, "Sweet nothings, sweet nothings, sweet nothings." And she's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm whispering sweet nothings in your ear." <laughs> And so she's trying to whisper sweet nothings at me to ease everything. To ease the tension for you? That's good. Yeah, it's great. I've completely, I've completely lost track of what I was going to ask you next. After. Okay, let's do this. Let's are you going to help me get back on track? Yes, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Okay. Book two. Book two. Withering Sapphire. Let's do it. So, <laughs> Withering Sapphire um, is about a girl named Eclipse who is beaten in, by her mother. Her mother is an alcoholic, and she's been beaten relentlessly for years. And it mm -hmm. starts off at the very beginning when she's like five, six, seven years old. I, I've written so many, I can't even remember. She's young. <laughs> and... Yeah. Her mom is beating her. She's drunk again. And this character named Gabriel, this vampire, comes out in the middle of nowhere and he kind of subdues her mom. And yeah. he takes her takes her with him to this big mansion where she meets the Demetrius. 
And um, there it's Dom, Dominsni, Dominsni, Dominsio. I can't, I cannot even pronounce his name. We call him Dom. We call him Dom. You can spell it though, which is no. Oh. I have a cheat sheet on my phone. You have it, you have it saved. You have it saved. Speller. Oh, yeah. It, it gets used like twice ever. The rest of the time it's Dom. And so he's okay. the dad. And then there's um, Daiquiri. She's a, I know. And I don't drink and all this stuff. So it makes, don't ask me. I wrote this when I was like 13. I wrote her name and I stuck with it. And oh, then okay. there's her name. There's Irvin. So there's four of them. Gabriel, Irvin, Dom, and Jackery. And they take her in for several years. It doesn't, it just shows brief glances. Um, they become part of her family. And, okay. you know, they protect her from her mom. They get her mom off of alcohol. And then when she's about 10 or so, they leave. Well, then the book picks up technically. She's 18 and her mom has gotten fired from her job. And so she moves her from Washington all the way to Dallas, Texas. Right. And she's beat up drinking. Obviously, she's been drinking for years, beats the snot out of her. And when she gets to Dallas, she runs in to Gabriel at school. And she's just kind of like, because she doesn't know what they are. And yeah. so they kind of ignore her for a while. And she ends up, her mom beats the unholy tar out of her. And they end up taking her, you know, in. And it's kind of like her story of trying to cope with things that are going on, trying to be with this family. And it, it really hits home because my mom was an abusive alcoholic for a long time. And yeah. so this story is one of those. It's dramatic because my mom wasn't near as bad at some of these things. But, you know, we did busted head, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I felt it was important because that kind of thing happens in society and we don't like talking about it. And so that book, this book is a little bit harder for me to edit and write and read. Yeah. Um, she eventually gets out of it. And so it's, she ends up living with the Demetriuses and it's, it's not that she gets her fairy tale ending, but she finally gets out of that situation and learns to kind of cope with that. Wow. So that's, I mean, that's her story, I guess, is book two. Well, that was four, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not, finger. <laughs> that sounds pretty deep. It it hits a lot of different parts, and it, it was very hard to read, I mean, to write. My sister is actually reading it right now, and she said she's having a hard time because, you know, it did happen to us. And, yeah. you know, and it's the physical as well as the verbal which we both received both of that from every angle and yeah. so it was just it was hard but there are so many kids out there I know I've read books and I'm just like this isn't what I'm going through I don't relate to this I don't understand and I felt like um you know 15 16 and up you know I felt like kids like that could read this yeah. And really understand even people my age, like, oh, there are other people that have been through this. Like Absolutely. no, it's not normal, but it's okay. Yeah. So Yeah, you can still make a life for yourself even after something like that's happened to you. Exactly. And how uh, it must have been really freeing for you once you wrote the book. Like was yeah. that was that feeling like like a weight had been lifted off your off your shoulders? The first time I wrote it, yes. Um, last year when I edited it for a month, I was in this deep hole of just depression. And it was just also knowing that people can read my books. They're reading my heart, my soul. I got made fun of in school a lot, you know, and I got made fun of outside of school for writing in these books. And I had one of my very best friends tell me that I was never going to make it as an author. I didn't have original ideas and I was, you know, and this was someone that I, I relied on. And so it's hard for me to open my heart up. And so yeah. it was like, it was relieving. And at the same time, it was terrifying. Because it's like, I now have two books out. And yeah. I, I know there's plenty of grammar issues in it, plenty of typos. And it's like, people can completely trash me. And it's like, it's horrible. But at the same time, there might be that one person that reads it and doesn't kill themselves. 
that one person that reads it and understands it's okay. It's going to be okay. I can make it through this. You yeah. know, that one person that speaks up and that's what, that's my biggest goal. Yeah. I would like to have millions and, you know, be able to live off my books and stuff. But my biggest goal has always been to have that one person read it and to save their life or to help them in some way. And that's just, I needed that person and yeah. I had teachers and I pulled myself out of it, but that's my biggest goal with these. And yeah, they have the fantasy twists and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, you know, I want people to understand that it doesn't always turn out okay. That doesn't mean it can't be happy. That doesn't mean you can't yeah. cope, you can't make it. Yeah. You know, when, when we're on that's that. that's so inspiring that you're that you've done that, honestly. And it's no wonder we have the similar sense of humor because it sounds like we grew up a lot the same way went through a lot of the same things so it's it, it shapes it shapes goofy people that's for it damn sure does. it does because i always love to make people laugh i don't like yeah. being the center of attention but if i'm making someone laugh that that's important to me like that's so, my coping mechanism is when i'm going through shit i tend to try to make everyone else laugh around me so yeah that makes absolutely. sense Absolutely, it makes hundred. It makes total sense. I'm so glad you've written that, or you've written these books and poured yourself into it like that. Because it's, I mean, people need to people need to be able to hear it, and you know, telling it in a story that whether it's fantastical or not is, it's a way that it makes it easier to digest. Because I remember I tried to write like a memoir style book before I wrote my first book, and I just I couldn't get it out. Like it just would not come out of me until I started doing it. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to write science fiction, whatever, and fantasy. And I started writing it, not even not even trying to write my story. And my story came out in those books, you know. It was like it was dying to get out of me. But it wasn't ready to come out in, like, a whole, like, reality truth. It had to come out in the way it needed to come out. But But now that it is, it's like, it's the most freeing feeling in the world. It feels amazing. Uh -huh. you know? No, it's fantastic that you're doing that too. I can relate 100% to that. But 40, I mean, that's. <laughs> I know. I know. And but there are some we've decided because I have to consult with my. I have my reader who yeah. absorbs everything, and then my plotter. She's my evil twin. She helps me with evil things. We've decided that there may be. Like a the gift angel and demon on your shoulder. You can hear him. <laughs> exactly no 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 because i'll be like i'll randomly message amy and i'll be like hey amy i need help with this plot twist and then i'll be like we'll wait and then i'll develop this horrible scene that you know and then i'll give it to melissa and have her read it and then get cursed at and laugh our heads off because it's fantastic <laughs> that's so cool and it's, it's beautiful to have the support but like you were saying i needed that little bit of fantasy to get me away from reality i didn't need to put this, my grandma and we're, I grew up Christian, and my grandma would always go and watch Harry Potter movies with me. And people yeah. were, why are you doing that? You know, all that kind of stuff. And my grandma would always tell them because she knows reality and fantasy. She knows the difference. Yeah. And so it's like, I had to have that fantasy to take me away and to help my creativity, you know, all of that stuff. And so that's why I wanted the vampires. I wanted yeah. the twist on reality where they're realistic books and they're about character development but you still got that twinge of you know something that's not of this world i guess well, it's it's like it's like it's it literally is like you being in your box it's safe it's like exactly. a place where you can process a place where you can be whatever you you are whoever you are without the fear of it you know destroying you and it's like going and that's what reading is it's like going into a different place to experience these things that we couldn't experience in real life because it's just either too scary or it's not possible or whatever but like allowing a, our mind to experience it so that we can grow that's cool i mean and like one of my characters there are parts in her mind that she doesn't realize have happened and when she's drunk she confesses them but it's because of our minds. There are things in my mind that I don't know about. I've had dreams and nightmares that people have told me that are recurring of things yeah. that have happened to me that I don't, my mind won't let me remember them because it's a safe place. 
And so okay. that's kind of what, you know, like these books, like it gives you that safe place of the, the nice little realistic fantasy. You know, that's why I like this style is because I'm getting away from reality, but not too far away where I lose myself. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. There's got to be a tie, right? There's got to be something that ties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to do the same thing with my book because I writing the ending, I felt it like it was going off in the outer space. Like literally, it did. It was the ending was going off in the outer space in, in the book, but like I didn't want the idea of it to go off in the outer space mm -hmm. because it was too like way out there. And mm -hmm. I and the ending is a huge twist, and I had to ground because I I had to ground it back into reality. And that was a personal, and I knew it when I felt, it was like, have you ever done gymnastics? <laughs> I'm a clutch, no. Have you ever done, a, have you ever done it, a cartwheel? I can do certain things, but I end up breaking things, and you know, they call people falling at the office pulling a Natasha, so oh. that should tell you my great fan. So Well, it's like, it's like sticking the landing, if you did it, if like. Okay. I felt like I felt like both feet hit the ground solidly, and it was only because it was tied to something real. That's a hundred percent real. That's that's really beautiful, and that's so important. I really like that. Yeah, it's got to be authentic, right? I think that's part of the fiction. You can lose people if it's not authentic. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, right? Like making something that's not a a real life story authentic, but it's true. It's like you can do it, and it's it's necessary. I think. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I love, you know, all kinds of genre, but I have a hard time with the high sci-fi type because I want it to be more realistic. Like, I want to be able to explain it. Like, with my vampires, I have it to where you can explain it away. Like, okay, I can see that happening. Like, you know, they yeah. don't, you know, blind anyone out in the light. Their um, bites actually kind of have a cloaking device to where, you know, you don't see it unless you've got cold hand on it or something like I've That's explained cool. it in a way where it's like realistic, but yeah. still have that fantasy. And it's like, my friends love, you know, Lord of the Rings and all these things, but I can't, my mind can't really grasp the reality of it. And that's my issue. Like I would love to be able to write these high sci-fi and I, I, you know, pride people. I mean, I love that people can do this, but that's my issue is I have to have a realistic, like, I have to be able to justify it, I guess you could say, yeah, in a way. And so that's why I guess mine are a little bit less high sci-fi. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I totally understand that for sure. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much for for coming on the Uniweb show. I cannot, I can't wait to read these books. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. <laughs> what? Why are you sorry? It's so weird having people read my books like. Uh, I have so many people that love them and like, but it's just, it's so hard and it's so weird. I'm not one of those like, hey, go read my book. And it's like, I've got all these followers on Twitter and I love all my Twitter peeps, but it's like, I don't know how to be like, hey, read my book. And I had one girl actually come up to me or message me like, oh, I had no idea you had books out. Like, I'm going to go read them. But it's like, I don't know how to market myself. So... That's the hardest part. I mean, that's why I started this. This is that's the whole reason I started this is because it's so hard for us to get our voice out there. And what better way to get our voice out there than really just put our voice out there, <laughs> like Essentially. talk about it? You know, it's simple, but because it, nobody wants nobody wants to be chased down and told to read a book. Like if yeah. they're gonna read if they're gonna read a book, they're gonna read a book. But I feel like if more people knew this, these amazing stories, like the one, like the the story of your life that's been poured into these books, if they knew that, they'd be like, "I gotta read this book," you know, like I I, I gotta read this book. That's how I feel. Like I, I've got to read these books because um, I can relate so much to everything you said. And not only that, but I I think you're you you seem like an awesome human being that is worthy of me reading something you've written, you know? And I think there's something to that too. Like we we want to buy from people we genuinely like. If exactly. we don't like the person, then, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, sorry, Sarah, I thought you were gonna, have you ever seen The Cable Guy? Yeah. Yeah. 
I thought you were about to Billy me right now. Oh, Billy. <laughs> oh, Billy. No. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, I keep getting us off track. I apologize. It's okay. You've got a, you've got a, you've got a very spastic brain like me. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, we're like, I feel like we could be twins in a lot of ways. We and, could. You're probably taller than me, though, so we'd have to be fraternal twins. So. Well, it's like that movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. I would be Danny DeVito! Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. you're, Danny De you're Danny DeVito in a wig. No, you're not. <laughs> it's because I'm fat, isn't it? <laughs> no, stop it. How dare you? No, Danny's great. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Please. Danny is fantastic. He's still doing his thing on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's great. I do love Danny. He's great. I love them both. That would be. We should dress up in, as on Halloween as that. That'd be perfect. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Probably really far away because it's like what eight something in your time and it's seven thirty in my time. Yeah, a whole hour dis difference. That's crazy. You, you must be in China. You must be in China or something. <laughs> No, I'm scared. Don't come steal. Don't come steal my brain. <laughs> yeah, I could. I could smell the kung pao chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it was all the. Is that in my pockets again? Yeah, the kung pao chicken in your pocket. <laughs> my nephew keeps sticking them in there. I don't know. What's hey, wrong we're gonna. With we're gonna have to do this again sometime. Yeah. Uh, interview part two for sure with Natasha D. I can't wait to read the two books you have out. And when's the third one coming out? I'm hoping um, to at least get pre-orders ready by June 10th. It, um, my late friend was killed on that date. And so that's a very important date. I am always, always have a hard time with it. And so this year I've kind of decided I want to make something beautiful out of that date. Yeah. And so I'm kind of trying to either have it ready for pre-order or have it to come out on that day that it depends on how my editing goes so hopefully okay. by june 10th we'll we'll be in that time zone okay and we'll uh we'll link the the facebook your facebook page for the books in the awesome. video and also this is available on amazon correct these books yes, it is <sighs> they <laughs> thank you again so much natasha d for joining the uweb interview show it's been a pleasure Thank you for having me, Matt. I appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been my pleasure. We will talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye, Matt. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?